Good? Oh, come on. You sound like you're not sure about that. God is good? Amen. And all the time, God is good. Happy Sabbath to everyone who's joining us here today. We have a special celebration Sabbath, as you could see, uh, for our Pathfinder ministry this morning. But before we begin, some announcements that we have to bring. Also, by the way, those engaging with us online, thank you so much for engaging with us. Uh, we hope that you're able to come down to Chicago one of these days and worship the Lord with the North Shore church family. Thank you so much for engaging with us. Uh, leave us a comment, leave us a like, share this link with a family member that needs some encouragement today. Uh, God is good and he has led us through another uh, week. Just some announcements before we jump into the program uh, today. Uh, tomorrow, starting at 10 a.m. If you can, we have the uh, food fair announcement there on the screen for us. Thank you so much. Uh, tomorrow, uh, April the 21st, we have a special event. I'll tell you the truth. If you have never been to a NSSDA, NSAA food fair, then you're missing out. Let me just tell you you're missing out. If you stay home tomorrow, you're missing out, okay? You're losing big time because we're going to have the world represented right here at our home tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. as we raise funds for Adventist education. So why don't you come and support Adventist education? Some of you here are the product of Adventist education yourselves. We want to see Adventist education continue to move forward. We want our kids to have an experience with Jesus every single day in the schoolhouse. And just like the good old elder and principal, uh, Mr. Turner says, it is a teamwork effort between the home, the church, and the school. How can we partner together? Uh, you know, events like this really make it all possible. So we're going to be here. Come, we have some wonderful food from around the world that we will be selling. Uh, all of the funds, all of it, will go to bless our Adventist school, NSAA, right here next to us, and bless our students so that next year we can have even more students come through our doors and be blessed in an amazing, amazing way. So don't forget about that, all right? That's tomorrow, April the 21st, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., okay? Um, just one other announcement. Uh, can we play the uh, Youth Week of Prayer announcement there on the screen? There's a slide. Um, here at the North Shore Church, those, thank you very much, A.V. We love to champion young people. And that's a beautiful thing because we want to be able to bring them closer to the feet of Jesus. We want our young people to get to know Jesus in an intimate way. And every year we do this special event for our youth. We do a week of prayer where we invite a wonderful guest speaker to come and bring the word of God to our young people. This time we're going to be having the young adult director of the Gulf States Conference and a very good friend of mine. And listen, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest to say, I'll give you another uh, side of this story. One of the big reasons as to why I am in pastoral ministry today is because of that guy. So his story is powerful, all right? If you have any high school age children, middle school age children, uh, connect them. We have a link on the newsletter that's already going out. If you don't have the newsletter, reach out to me, okay? Reach out to me. I'll give you the link. Uh, our youth director, Elias Perez, will pass on the link to you as well. We want our young people to be encouraged. Pastor Marcelo Mansour is going to bring the word to us, not this next week, but the following week on Zoom. All right, so make sure that you uh, put that on your calendar there and don't forget it. All right, um, let me see if I'm forgetting any other announcements. Oh, yes, of course, one very obvious last thing. Uh, if you uh, look behind you, you're going to be able to see some very, um, very loud instruments. Well, let's just put it, it's a, very, it's a very loud instrument, very, very strong instrument. I want to be able to give you a word of warning. Okay, if any of you have any hearing uh, equipment, any hearing aid uh, installed, uh, mothers of very young toddlers, if you want to move a little further away from where the center aisle is, 
Uh, you're also welcome to do that as well, you know, for the, for the hearing of your, of your children. Just a word to, to advise and to warn. Uh, we want to praise the Lord today. All right, God has been good. That's what this program is all about. Our North Shore SDA Pathfinder Club is here to celebrate how good God has been. And we're on a mission. We're on a mission, and we're almost there. August of this year, 2024, we're going to be hitting the road all the way west to Gillette, Wyoming, for the International Pathfinder Campery. What a blessing. So we're very excited. Thank you so much, church family, for your kindness. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your partnership. This is a journey that we've been doing together, and we really, really appreciate you. Thank you, parents, and thank you also, last but not least, to the Pathfinders and the Pathfinder staff. All right? Let me just look here to see if we have the clear, if there are no other announcements that we need to make. Okay. So we should be good to go. Happy Sabbath, church. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Pathfinder Pledge is for me to keep the morning and watch, be my honest heart, care for my body, keep a level eye, be courteous and obedient, walk softly in the sanctuary, keep a song in my heart, and go on God's errands. Pathfinder Pledge By the grace of God, I will be pure and kind and true. I will keep the Pathfinder Law. I will be a servant of God and a friend to man. Please bow your head for prayer. Dear Jesus, bless this performance and bless it for those who hear it. May it reach the hearts of some of the congregation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Vamos a cerrar los ojos. Panos de que te hacen suelo santificado en su nombre. Y es por otro día de vida que estamos en tu casa y que nos ayudes a entender y escuchar tu palabra. En nombre de Jesús, amén. Ang banal na makapangyarihan, aming manalang at tagapagligtas, pinapurihan ka namin sa inyong kabaitan. Maraming salamat po sa walang hanggang pagmamahal at pagpapala na inyong ipanagkakaloob sa bawat isa sa amin, sa kalayaan na sambahin ka sa araw ng Sabado. Aming pong hihiniling ang pagpatatawad, ang aming mga pagkakamali at pagkukulang sa pamumuhay kristyano. Naway ang gabay ng banal na espiritu ang tuwag suma aming lahat. Ito po ang aming dagdaling sa matamis na pangalim ni Jesus. Amen.
Pathfinders, you may be seated. Thank you, Pathfinders. Thank you so much, church family. Happy Sabbath once again. For those that don't know me, my name is Pastor Felipe Suarez. First name, Pastor. Middle name, Felipe. Last name, Suarez, as you can see. Um, I'm glad to be here with all of you this morning. Uh, it's a blessing because this is a high Sabbath. This is a celebration that we're embarking in this morning. God has been good, and we want to be able to tell that story today through the Pathfinder Club. It's going to be amazing. Some of you might be unfamiliar with what Pathfinders is. Uh, just in a brief nutshell, in 1950, uh, the SDA Church uh, officially organized this ministry for youth uh, called Pathfinder Ministry. And since 1950 until today, we've been building this legacy of service, of, of uplifting the character of Jesus, and most and foremost, uh, being a servant of God and a friend to man. That's what it boils down to, okay? So Pathfinders is a ministry designed for children between the ages of 10 and 16. Uh, that's the group that you see here. Uh, we also have uh, in the club ministry realm another ministry for younger children. You might be asking, wow, my kid's not 10 years old yet. We have something called Adventurers Club. Uh, that is the club that comes before Pathfinders for our younger children. Uh, that is an active ministry that we have. You can speak to Sister Kisha Neal for more detail on that and how your child can join. But that's what we're going to be doing here today, celebrating God's work through club ministries. We have worship. We have music. We have a wonderful and amazing play that we've been able to put together telling the story of Moses. And I love that story. I've heard it and, and, and watched it a thousand times. I, I've seen that Prince of Egypt film a gazillion times at this point. It was a Sabbath afternoon tradition. But I hope that today you'll experience it in a different way uh, through the lens of our Pathfinders. Uh, so join us. Worship with us. Praise God with us. Pray with us. That's what today is all about. Now we're going to have a wonderful moment of praise and worship. Going to be able to uh, ask our uh, leaders here in charge of praise and worship to stand up and join us. That is uh, Sister Ari uh, Casasola and Brother Donald Hall. They're going to join us up here and they'll guide us in worship this morning. We will ask you to stand and praise God with us. So as they make their way up here, let's get ready with a spirit of worship. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. At this time, let us all stand as we sing our Pathfinder song. We are the Pathfinder Strong. Turn 
our hymnals to 152, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Christian soldier. We'll be singing first verse and the last verse. Is that okay with everyone? Amen. Amen.
this time we come, we come to our prayer now. So I ask the congregation, those who can kneel, let me to kindly go on our knees. If you can, you can be seated. Pathfinders, join me as we go on our knees as well, as we seek our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty eternal Father, as we come before you once more, Father, indeed, it's a privilege for us to be in your house of worship. Father, we are happy, dear Father, that we have this opportunity to come before you, to be blessed by you, dear Father. And we ask, dear Father, as we continue to sing praises to your name, that our, that our worship this morning would be accepted, that the, that the blessing that you have for us would be poured onto us, dear Father, our cups may be filled, that we can be strengthened in this Christian path, that we can go out from here, dear Father, be an encouragement to those who are in need of the story of Jesus. Amen. That we can tell, that we can share your love with others, dear Father, who are in need of it. Amen. Father, as I said, dear Father, we are, we are grateful to be here this morning, dear, dear Father. Thank you. This week has been a rough week for many of us. Amen. And still, dear Father, there's battles, there's trials that we've been facing, dear Father. And we know that we are not here on our own. But you are there with us, dear Father, fighting these battles. Yes, so we ask that you continue to pour out your power upon us. Yes, continue to encourage us that as we tread in this Christian path, that we may never be discouraged, that we may never give up nor leave, but that we may continue to move forward, dear Father, because there is um, the, the prize at the end. There is a blessed hope for us, and that is when the sun returns, that we can be with you forever and ever. Father, we want to lift up our pop finders as well this morning, dear Father, these young people who we are, we are with your, with your power, dear Father, that, that we are training them to be children for you. Father, we, we know that they are the future, dear Father, and we want the future to be now. So as counselors, we ask for your wisdom, for your guidance, dear Father, to, to, to use us that we, can, that we can train these pop finders to be children for you. Amen. Father, whatever, whatever they have part to do this morning, dear Father, may you bless them. May you touch it, dear Father, bring comfort upon them that they can present their gifts to you this morning. And also, dear Father, I want to lift up our, our young man servant this morning, dear Father, Brother Leeward Casasola, Amen. that the message that he has for us this morning may be one of yeah. hope and encouragement. Touch his lips, dear Father, like Isaiah, that the message may not be from him, but it may be from you, dear Father. Yes, so we ask, dear Father, once more to allow your angels to encamp within our midst. To take, to, to take testimonies of our worship to you this morning, dear Father, that it can be one that heaven will rejoice with us this morning. Let your will be done. We ask all these in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Amen.
Come on, why won't this stupid thing work? Hey, Samaya. Um, hello, Samaya? Maybe if I change the batteries? Samaya. Oh, hey, Hattie, didn't see you standing there. Anyways, what's up? Well, I came over here to see what you were doing, but I still have no idea what you're doing. Well, I was trying to turn on this TV to watch my show, but it's not working. Man, you pay all this money for, you paid all this money for TV and some cable, and you mean to tell me it won't just simply turn on? Maybe it's broken? I kinda hope not. How much do you pay for it anyways? Enough. What's enough? Don't worry about that part. What are you trying to watch? It is Sabbath, you know. I was trying to watch this new TV series called Believe the Promise. You know the story based on Moses? But the TV won't work. Isn't that that new show on the Pathfinder Network? Uh-huh. It's supposed to come on after VeggieTales. VeggieTales? Which episode? How am I supposed to know, Hattie? This thing won't work. Um, what time does it come on? Five minutes. What? The show comes on in five minutes. Um, I don't know what to tell you. Thanks, Hattie. Call me crazy, dear, but um, did I just do that? Press something. Like what? Another button. What do you mean, what? Well, I guess your name is now Crazy Burnett. I wonder what happens if I press this button. That's it. What's it? What did I just do? You got my show to work. I don't get it. Why is this show so important to you? Because Moses is one of my favorite Bible characters. so confused. Why can't you just watch this on Netflix or something? I don't have the money for that. But apparently you have the money for some magical remote. Whatever. This show is important to me because Rose is one of my favorite Bible characters. Play the trailer and you'll see what I mean. Okay. The International Pathfinder Camporee is one of the mightiest Adventist youth events in the world. It's where honors are earned, pins are traded, friendships are formed, faith is shaped, and lasting memories made. But how did it all begin? The story starts back in 1984 with a bold idea to bring Pathfinders together from all over North America for one big camporee. But what place could hold so many people? And was there enough time, enough money, enough volunteers to make it happen? God made a way, providing for every need. And on July 31st, 1985, over 14,000 Pathfinders attended the first ever North American Division Camporee in Camp Hale, Colorado. BMX biking, rock climbing, and archery were just a few of the many activities offered. A circus bear even made an appearance to entertain the campers. Despite the initial success, four years later in 1989, there was no money and no sponsorship for another Camporee. But God provided again, this time through the Columbia Union Conference, who generously hosted more than 13,000 Pathfinders at the Friendship Camporee in Mount Union, Pennsylvania. Over 509 clubs enjoyed trading pins, navigating the obstacle course, and watching an amazing laser show. And that was almost the end of the story as no division, union, or conference was willing to sponsor another camporee. But God gave an even bigger vision to the Rocky Mountain Pathfinder leaders, an international camporee, bringing together Pathfinders from all over the world. But just months before the 1994 camporee, the hosting property owner backed out. After earnest prayer, God supplied a new location at the Bandemir Speedway, a drag racing track, the Camporee saved again. Over 12,000 campers from 23 different countries attended 
Dare to Care. The campers enjoyed a wide range of daily activities and then came together each evening to praise and worship God at Red Rocks Amphitheater. In 1999, the second international camperie found a home in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. 21,000 pathfinders from 53 countries came to discover the power. Only a few days in, a severe storm hit Oshkosh. The campers prepared for the worst, but were amazed to see the storm split in two and pass safely around the campground on either side. Though the 2004 International Camporee was themed Faith on Fire, it was nicknamed the Winter Camporee because Oshkosh had record low temperatures that week. Though the campers were cold, their faith was set on fire by the story of Joseph. 31,000 attended from 65 countries and over 300 were baptized. In 2009, over 35,000 pathfinders from 71 countries watched the powerful story of Esther unfold as she showed her courage to stand. The campery was filled with spiritual highlights from the 500 pathfinders who took their stand and were baptized to the giant cross in the western sky on the final night. The campery closed with a bang in an amazing fireworks display. In 2014, over 50,000 pathfinders from 80 countries came to Oshkosh for Forever Faithful, the biggest Adventist youth event in history. Campers participated in unique daily activities like blacksmithing and wakeboarding. Each evening, they enjoyed the antics of Ryan and Chico and were inspired by the amazing story of Daniel. During the week, over 600 pathfinders were baptized. On the last night, dangerous waves of thunderstorms threatened to cancel the evening program. As the campers in the outdoor arena waited and prayed, the first part of the storm narrowly missed the campground and the program went on, ending with the dramatic finale in the lion's den and a spectacular fireworks show. The 2019 Chosen International Pathfinder Camporee reached new heights with wide-ranging activities, honors, parades, service projects, and inspirational evening programs featuring the story of David. Attendance reached record numbers with over 55,000 Pathfinders attending from 105 countries. Two Guinness World Records were set during the Camporee the world's largest scarf and slide weighed in at over 800 pounds. And a previous record was broken when 13,310 people came together to form the largest ever human cross. But the biggest highlight was the 1,320 youth and adults who were baptized at the Camporee and the thousands more who returned home to prepare for baptism. On the final night of the Camporee, the Pathfinders gathered for a spectacular finale, concluding with the reveal of the theme for the 2024 Camporee. Moses and Miriam! Hi, everybody! From low attendance to high, from national to international, after four decades, eight Camporees and 235,000 Pathfinders, we look to the future. God is with us. He has led, is leading, and will continue to lead us. See you at the next Camporee. Baby, so what? Look! 
Is is that the show? Let's watch. A long time ago in Egypt, the king ordered. A long time ago in Egypt, the king ordered the death of all male babies who were born to the Israelites. But there was one baby that survived. His mother put him in a basket in the river and asked his sister Miriam to watch over him. She prayed over the basket before she let it go. As the baby flowed down the river, a young lady, a princess to be more exact, and her servant were relaxing by the water. While she was sitting, she noticed a basket amongst the reed. It's just a baby. Wait, a baby? Don't tell me you want this thing. I do. Look how cute he is. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't really know how to do this whole parenting thing. I need someone to help me raise my new son. Don't look at me. Wait, wait, I don't need someone to help me. Now, who are you? Never mind that. Young child, go and fetch whoever you were speaking of. So little Miriam ran off to get her mother. She told her mom everything that had happened and that the princess wanted her to help raise the baby. They quickly ran to the, play, to the palace where the princess gave the baby to his mother for him to raise. When he got a little bit older, she... She brought the little boy back to the palace where the prince, where the princess named him. Moses. Moses. Because he was drawn, was drawn from the water. As Moses grew into a young man. He started to, bec to become more aware of what was happening in his country. One day, he came upon an Egyptian beating an Israelite. He looked around and saw that no one, nobody was there, and he was killed, and they ki sorry, and he killed him. He then buried the body in the sun. The following day, he saw two Hebrew men fighting and asked, what was wrong? One of them answered. Who made you the ruler and judge over us? Are you going to kill us like how you killed that Egyptian yesterday? Moses grew afraid. Pharaoh found out and ordered his death. Once Moses heard what Pharaoh had planned, he fled and settled in the land of Midian. While he was there, he found himself a wife named Zephora and had a son named Gerson, and he also became a shepherd. One fateful night, while Moses was tending the sheep, he became upon a burning bush.
Moses. Moses. Moses! Uh, oh, here I am, here I am. Do not approach any closer. Take off your dirty mortal sandals, because this here is holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have heard the cries and seen the affliction of my people. I have come to deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh and to bring them to the land that is flowing with milk and honey. This land I shall bring you to is called Canaan. Go, I will send you to Pharaoh and bring my people out of Egypt. Yo, who am I to do, you know, all this? This is a pretty big task for me. I don't know if I can handle the job. I will be with you and never leave you or forsake you. That's nice to know, but... But what, my son? You know, if you're the one calling me, you know, how will I know how to be Pharaoh? You know, I'm... I'm you know I stutter, right? Tell them that the great I am sent you. But they'll, they'll laugh at me, even more they'll mock me, or even kill me, you know, whichever one comes first. Moses, what is that in your hand? Uh, the staff? Do me a favor, and just throw it down. Right here in front of you and me? Yes, my son. When Moses threw the staff on the ground, it became a snake. He became afraid and ran behind one of the sheep. You, you didn't tell me to do that. Pick it up. What? Moses, put out your hand and grab it by the tail. But, but God. Moses? Yes. Moses put out his hand and indeed grabbed the snake by the tail and it became a staff again. Well, that is over. Um, but like, how do you know if I could be him? Will you be by my side through the whole time? Will you? Yes, I will be by your side. But God, please, isn't like there anyone who can go with me? Please? Fine. Fine. I'll send your brother Aaron with you. He'll Aaron? help you out. That guy? But... <laughs> Go! Okay, fine. Moses and his sheep returned to his home. Did you mess up my parts? I didn't like it. There he left the sheep, took his wife and son, and traveled back to Egypt with his handy-dandy staff in hand. Attention, attention! Have you or a loved one been struggling with faith? Has life made you feel like you wanna just get up and run away? You are not alone. Call 1-800-TRUST-IN-GOD. Just get on your knees, fold your hands, and bow your head. God will always pick up and answer your calls. The line is open 24 seven. Call him in the morning, call him in the new time. Hey, call him anytime. He will never leave you nor forsake you. It says in Deuteronomy 31 eight, that the Lord himself will go before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Whenever you need him, dial 1-800-TRUST-IN-GOD. That's 1-800-TRUST-IN-GOD, call now. God called on Moses to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. Now, we see him and his older brother Aaron go before Pharaoh. My king, there are two gentlemen who request to see you. Very well. Give me my wife. 
Well, well, brother. It's nice to see you again. What brings you to Egypt? Well, you know, you actually. So. Me? <laughs> yes. But I'm kind of in a pickle here, you know? You know, you kind of have my people held captive, and I kind of need you to let them go. Huh? The Lord my God says let them go. And what people is that, Moses? Are you here to make trouble again? This is why you came back? Not to reconnect? You haven't seen me for a very long time. We could have dinner first and then discuss whatever it is you or you are trying to discuss. Yeah, homie, we don't have time for that. We're here to do it. Me? Us? Him. We're here to do a job, and that's what we plan on doing. Fine, let's get to it. Wait, so we're canceling dinner? Okay, we're canceling dinner. <laughs> so who is this God that sent you here to me? The great I am. What? The great I who? Prove it. Huh? Prove it. Unless you can't, and there is no great I am. Okay. Here's the game plan, Aaron. You're going to take that staff, throw it down on the ground, it's going to become a snake. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Trust me. This is gonna work. Okay. So Aaron threw down the staff, and it indeed became a snake. Pharaoh mentioned for his magician to do the same. They threw down there as well, and they also became snakes. However, Aaron's staff sw swallowed up the magician's staff. Yet Pharaoh's heart became harder, just as the Lord predicted. So, bro. What's it gonna be this time? You gonna let my people go now or what? Hmm. Yeah, no. Well, brother, since you're not gonna listen to me, Aaron, here's a game plan. Hi. You're gonna throw, put your staff in the Nile. So? The Nile shall turn to blood. The fish will die. And the water will stink. And I mean really stink. It's gonna smell really, really bad. This is going to be the worst ever made. That's it. Get out. Be gone, brother. Okay. Aaron, we out. I hope you like the taste of blood. <laughs> Both Aaron and Moses walk away from Pharaoh and went straight to Nile. There, Aaron stretched out his hand and struck the Nile, and the water instantly began turned into blood. All of the fish died, and it now became, began to stink. Every Egyptian was digging around for fresh water to drink, but couldn't find any. Sir, all the, wa Sir, all the water has turned to blood. Can we not do the same? Bring me that jug of water. What are you going to do with it? The magicians poured out the water from the container, and it also turned into blood. Pharaoh went back into his house to retire from, for the evening. Seven days had passed, and God told Moses to return to Pharaoh and ask him to let his people go. Moses and Aaron have returned, your majesty. What do you guys want now? Come to turn my bath water into sand? Well, uh, not necessarily. What was gonna say? Um, ah, there it is. Let my people go. I'm starting to get annoyed. No. All right then. Well, the Lord, my God, will send frogs, and the frogs will be everywhere. Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> we can do that too. Bet. Great, now I got twice as many frogs. Moses, pray to this God of yours to get rid of these frogs. And maybe I'll let your people go. All right, when do you want me to pray? Tomorrow. Bet, homie. So Moses prayed on behalf of Pharaoh and the frogs died. When Pharaoh noticed that the frogs were gone, he changed his mind and refused to let his people go. 
Time. Pass and. Pharaoh, my king. Moses and Aaron have returned again. Again? What do you guys want now? Let my people go. <laughs> no. Okay, Zen. You know what gnats are, right? Gnats? We can't do that, sir. Yeah, we can't do that. Yeah. Oh, boy. And the gnats showed up. And, every, and where, everywhere, and were everywhere on people, on animals, on myself, on everything. Pharaoh still hardened his heart and refused to let the people go. Days had passed and Aaron and Moses returned. Sir, they're back. What do you guys want now? All you've done is cause nothing but trouble. Are these re people really important to you? Look, Pharaoh, God says, let my people go so I may worship him. If not, Y'all about to get flies. Flies? Really? Flies? <laughs> okay, Zen. Hope you have enough bug spray. Buzz buzz. <laughs> Sir, maybe you should consider letting them go. Days had passed, and Aaron and Moses had returned yet again. Why are you here again? I'm really getting sick and tired of seeing your faces, Moses. And you too, Aaron. Love you too, homie. So, are you gonna let my people go now, homie, or what, man? I will not let your people go. Okay, then. The Lord, my God, shall bring disease onto all of your livestock tomorrow morning. Your sheep, your cattle, your horses, and your dinner, all of them. Wait. So no dinner tonight as well? <laughs> the Lord did what he promised. Days passed, all of the livestock fell ill and died. Just as the Lord said, Pharaoh still hardened his heart. Stop coming here. Sorry. <laughs> I wonder what you got for me today. Boils. What? what? Are you gonna let my people go, man? Please say yes. Hmm, let me think about it. No. Aw, oh, man. So Moses picked up some salt and threw them in the air. Everyone, everywhere, were covered in boils. Man, I feel itchy. Sir, I feel itchy. Yeah, yeah, me too. Days pass, and you guess it. Aaron and Moses return to Pharaoh. Take me with you this time. <laughs> I wish. I'm not a special delivery, but what do you got for me this time? A pair of socks? Nope. I was thinking about hail. I'm sorry, what? Tell him, Moses. And then the Lord will unleash his full power. This will be the worst storm to ever come upon this land. Sir, you have to let them go. No. As you wish, brother. The storm that struck was the worst storm they had ever had. The hail struck everything, houses, animals, people. Trees even fell to pieces. Moses extended his hand to the Lord, and the storm stopped. Mo Pharaoh hardened his heart yet again, and did not let the people go. Moses and Aaron went back to Pharaoh to ask for their people to be set free. Might as well make yourselves at home at this point. Thank you, kind sir. My fields, my crops, everything that I had was destroyed by you, Moses. Bro, 
Just let my people go and it'll all be over, man. And again, I say no. How long are you going to refuse to humble yourself? Just let my people go. Okay, then. If you don't let our people go, locusts will come to your land. They will be all over the ground. You won't be able to see the ground. They will eat the remainder of your leftovers in your house of servants and the houses of all the people of Egypt. They will fill the house of Egypt. They will be the worst storm ever and the worst plague ever that's ever seen in Egypt. How much longer are you going to ignore this man and his brother as they terrorize us continuously? Release these people and let them go. Clearly their God is stronger than us. Our Egypt is about to be destroyed. Please. Go and serve your God. Who exactly is going with you? Young and old, sons and daughters, sheep and cattle. As a matter of fact, all of us to be exact. Nope, only the men. You can't do that, man. Then get out, now. Moses and Aaron was driven out of Pharaoh's presence. Moses extended his hand over the land and all of Egypt was filled with locusts. They ate everything that grew from the ground. Moses extended his staff, and a strong wind from the east blew the locusts all over the land. Came, became dark and nothing green remained on the trees. Pharaoh called for Aaron and Moses immediately. I have sinned against you and your God. Pray for me this once and forgive me as well as take this debt away. Moses went out, of, out, from, out, out from Pharaoh's and prayed to God. A large wind from the west blew all the locusts in the Red Sea. When Pharaoh saw what happened, he changed his mind. Yet again, days passed and God told Moses to extend his hand towards heaven and there was absolute darkness in the land for a total of three days. It was so dark that you couldn't see the person in front of you. Darkness not, not only filled the land, but filled the mind of Egypt. Let them go. No. Bro, is this banter not getting old for you, Ed, man? Go. Be gone, brother, for if I see your face one more time, you're going to die. Fine, as you wish. I will leave your presence, and I will, me, to you, to never see you ever again as well. Goodbye. The Lord told Moses that he will bring about one more plague, the death of the firstborn son. God said, about midnight, I will go throughout the land, and all of the firstborn in, in the land of Egypt will die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh to the firstborn son of the slave girl and all of the firstborn of the cattle, Moses told his people to paint the door with their home, of their homes with the blood of a perfect one-year-old male lamb. The blood, was, the blood will be a sign to the Lord that those in that house will be safe. As midnight came, the Lord passed by and attacked all of the firstborn. From the throne, from the throne of Pharaoh, the firstborn of the captive and all the, the firstborn cattle. Oh my 
goodness. What's wrong? Why are you screaming? I thought you were getting ready to put the children to bed. He's dead. What are you talking about? Our son. Our son is dead. Our son is dead. Moses. It had to be Moses. You there. Bring him to me. Bring him to me now. Who? My king. Moses. Moses and Aaron were brought, brought to Pharaoh in the middle of the night. Pharaoh, my brother. How can you call me brother while my son is lying dead in my arms? Take a look. Take a look of what you've done to your own nephew. But brother, brother. Don't brother me. You are no longer my brother. Take your people, everything that you own, and yourself, and leave this land at once. I don't ever want to see your face again for as long as I shall live. Pharaoh, bro. Leave.
so much for supporting the North Shore Stars. Thank you for supporting North Shore Stars. Thank you, North Shore, for supporting us. Thank you, North Shore, for your support. Thank you so much, North Shore. Thank you for your support, North Shore. Thanks for everything, North Shore. Thank you, North Shore. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, North Shore. We love you, North Shore. North Shore, we love you. Thank you so much, North Shore. Line, go. We appreciate you, North Shore. More motion! <laughs> we appreciate you, North Shore. After a few days, as Pharaoh sat in his, in his throne room, his heart began to harden again. There was no, there was no he could call, no one he could call to bring his water or take care of his children. There was no one there to continue to build his mighty structure, and this made him angry. What had, he, what had he been thinking when he decided to let the Israelites go? He had indeed made, made a grave mistake. He indeed to bring, he, sorry, he needed to bring back to where he belonged. He called for his chief lieutenant to join him in the throne room. You call for me, your highness? Yes. Ready my chariot and ready the men. We are going to get the Israelites back. We are what? Didn't you just let them go? Yes, I did. And it was a grave mistake. I could have told you that. Silence, you fool. Prepare the 600 chariots and the rest of the army. We are going to get our servants back. The, this God of theirs is not greater than me. I am the greatest God there is. Now go. On the other hand, the Lord alerted Moses to the angered Pharaoh and his army. Lord, Lord, save us. Silence, silence. Hey, there's nothing to be afraid of. My people, the Lord will never abandon us. He will always be with us. Moses, lift your rod out to the sea and divide it so that the Israelites may go through the middle of the sea on dry ground. Moses did as God instructed, and the sea immediately began, began to part. Although hesitant, the Israelites were in awe to the wonder before them, and they began to make their way through the enormous part of sea. The Lord overthrew the Egyptian into middle of the sea, crushing their horses and chariot with them.
Good morning, church. Can everyone stand, please? As his mother, I am privileged to introduce my son, Leroy, to you as our guest speaker for this morning. Lear is a very humble vessel for Christ. As the age of, at the age of 12, he presented his first sermon, his first message. His, fir, his favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This text that keeps him motivated on this path. I pray that God may anoint you, your mind and your tongue, as you preach the word of God this morning. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. How many of you enjoyed the little skit this morning? You may be seated. I first off want to thank Pastor Felipe for giving me this opportunity to preach the message of God to you this morning. And I also like to thank my mom for introducing me. And I also like to thank God for being with me throughout this throughout making this sermon for you guys and to bring the message and his word to you today. I first off want to um, start off with a Bible text, Hebrews, Hebrews 9, 28. And it says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them, unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time, without sin unto salvation. I want to ask you all a question. How many of you believe that Jesus will return? Amen. Amen. Jesus said in John 14, 3, I will, if you know it, please say it with me. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The Bible also says we serve a God who cannot lie. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and he will not make it good? So this, is what, so this is what we look toward, the blessed hope found only in Jesus Christ. Titus 2, 3, 13 to 14. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Please bow your heads as we pray. Most kind of Father, Lord, as we come to you this morning on your blessed Sabbath day, Lord, we first give you thanks for being with us through each and every day, Lord, waking us up each and every morning and guiding us through the day and for also providing for us, Lord. As I preach your word to your people this morning, I ask that you please let your Holy Spirit talk through me, Lord, and that your people may listen and also share the word too, Lord. Continue to be with us short this day, and let me enjoy your Sabbath day, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. <clears throat> I would like for you to turn your Bibles to Genesis 15, and we'll read from verses 13 to 16. When you find it, say amen. Amen. And it says, 
And he said unto Abram, Know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also the nation whom thy shall serve, will I judge, and afterward shall they count out, come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy father in peace, thou shalt be buried in a, good, in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites in, is not yet full. Now, there are many promises found in God's word. But today, I want to talk to you about three promises. The first one, when God had, Abra had Abraham out of the land of the Chaldeans, he was 75 years old, and God promised him that he would make him a great nation, and that he would, he would bless him. Despite his age, God, pro God promised would prevail. And, also, and as well as we know, Abraham will have two sons, one being Ishmael, and eventually the one who was promised, Isaac. But as we read, Abraham would become the father of a great nation. But God long before told him that his descendants would be in a strange land. He also told, them, told him about the suffering that they will endure. But God promised that he, he would deliver them in the fourth generation. What a mighty God we serve, amen? We, that he can tell the beginning from the end. Most importantly, he has blessed his people, chosen with insight, with the spirit of our prophecy. Amos 3, 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth the secret unto his servants, the prophets. Amen. In Exodus 1, 8 to 14, God's people, as he said it would happen, that his people became the victims of bondage in Egypt and the land of the strangers. But we know the story of how God deliver, raised a great man to be the deliverer of his people. Does anybody know who that man is? Moses. By God's hand, Egypt was delivered, just as it was promised to Abraham. Now, I want us to look at something very interesting. The mighty exodus from Egypt, just a micro microsome of the, of the plan of God, has in store for the bondage of this wicked world. It is important to know that in all that Moses had written and spoken during his writ time with his people, God had thought of the coming Messiah and spoke to them concerning a great deliverer. Let us turn our, turn our Bibles to Deuteronomy 18, 15. And it says, the Lord thy God will rise, uh, raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren liken unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. While the scripture tells us of God not leaving his people without a, um, without a prophetic voice, it, it, um, the coming of a great prophet who is Christ himself, all the promises from Adam to Eve ex expressed in, our, in the writings concerning the Messiah was fulfilled. Jesus himself said so in the book of Luke 24, 27. And Jesus explained to them what it was said about himself in all the scriptures, beginning with the books of Moses and all the writings of the prophets. And in Acts chapter 7, verse 30, 37, and the beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures and the things concerning himself. More than 1,400 years before Jesus ever walked the earth, he promised to the world as a savior, fulfilling over 300 and 
50 prophecies from the Old Testament. I want us to think about even more boldly the Lord proclaimed through Daniel, the very detailed year of his baptism. And I want you to, after the service, go home today and a little homework for you to go and read and revise Daniel chapter 9. And sure enough, the Messiah appeared right on time in the year 27 AD, just as promised, a savior to mankind. Isaiah 9, 6. For, uh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Matthew one twenty one. She she will bear a son, and you shall call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, brothers and sisters, two promises that were made already. One, a promise to Abraham that through his seed the Messiah would come, that his descendants before this would happen would be in bondage, but God would save them from the enemy. God fulfilled this through his chosen deliverer, which was Moses. So the people were freed from bondage. Then the second promise of the Messiah, the savior to the entire world was given. He came and promised and died for our sins. We can see that God of heaven does keep his promises. He is not a liar. He fails his people not. But, but while the anointed son of God walked the earth, God the son himself spoke, who spoke to Abraham as an angel and who spoke to Moses from the burning bush, gave us another promise as he spoke to us while he was in the form of man. And now I, I want you guys to say, say this, this line, I will come again. And I will say this question and you will, um, will answer with that, with that line. What is this promise? A little louder. What is this promise? Amen. Amen. And that promise is in John 14, 2 to 3. Now, as I come to the close of my sermon, I want to speak to my fellow young people as myself. You have seen, the, you have seen that God of the Bible is indeed a God declaring the beginning from the end. And he, promised, and, he, and he promised he would do. Young people, do not be deceived by the mockers in the world. As the fool has, has said in the heart, there is no God. But there is one, there is a God, and he will come again for us. Don't let the works of hypocrites discourage you, for, the, for God will bring into judgment every work. It doesn't matter how long it takes. In the time of Joseph, Joseph to Moses, it took 400 plus years, but God still made his promise come true. In time of Moses to Christ, it took 1,400 plus years, but he, he still prevailed his promise. While Moses was given a vision to the, of the Messiah, it took more than 490 years from his time, but God still came and, pro and he made his promise come true. Now, you might think, oh, you, you, would, oh, you asked God for, for something, and it hasn't come yet. But I want you all to have faith and believe that God will make his promise come true. It doesn't matter how long it would take, but God still will make that promise come true. He will still will fulfill his promise. Brothers and sisters, take hold of Christ and his promise. No, thing, no these things came to pass. What do you make of Matthew 26, 64. Matthew 26, 
Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man, setting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. And that's the promise God has for us today, that he will come again and he will receive us unto himself. We will see the Son of Man coming. In Hebrews 9, 26, it says, So Christ was once offered to bear, his, bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Christ will come, come to save his people once again, not from Egypt, not from, not from sin, but from this wicked world. Amen. Amen. Can we say amen one more time? Amen. God is at work in the lives of our young people. Amen. Come on now. Hey, this is an exciting moment. I'm over there in the balcony with the AV team, just giving them the cues for the videos, and I'm watching everything that's going down, and my heart is full to be able to see God's young people active and at work in his ministry. Amen? You see, none of this would be possible. I don't want to take too much time, but none of this would be possible if it wasn't for the assistance and the help of some very, very important people. I can't do all of this on my own. I know that I, I stand here as the current director of our Pathfinder Club uh, and also youth pastor. Uh, that's, 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 that's stuff stacked on top of each other, I understand. But I couldn't do any of this on my own. And I just want to, this is not even on the program, but I want to be able to call up the staff of our club. If you're a staff member of our club, can you stand up? And, and church family, can we con uh, thank and applause the people that have worked hard to pour in to our young ones? To minister to them. I want to call you up. Come on up. If you're a staff member, come on up. Come on up, come on up, stand here right next to me. You see, these are individuals that are not paid at all. They're not paid a dime for their time. They could be doing anything else. These are people with children, newborn children that could be spending time with their babies. But they have chosen to invest time in your children. That's something. Church, when I say this with emphasis, understand that it comes from the heart. You see, these individuals here, I thank the Lord for each and every one of them right here. Sister, Sister Sherry Ann, no, no, stop. Come on up. Stop, stop playing games. Stop playing. We're not playing games today. We're keeping it real. We're keeping it simple and quick. All of these individuals here are a blessing. You see, I want to take this time to also thank the parents. All of the parents of our Pathfinders and the community surrounding them. Thank you so much for the time that you've put in, for all of the times that you have invested in our fundraisers with helping us to sell food, you saw it in the video, so that we could go to the International Camporee this year. All of the parents that have contributed uh, to, the, to the Pathfinder potlucks, I wanna thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule as well to pour into our club, and, and it comes from the heart, this thank you that I say. You see, I wanna thank the church for their commitment, their care, their attention. Two years ago, I say this again, this club was dead. For two and a half years, we, who have always had a legacy of a Pathfinder ministry, were non-existent. COVID made the effort even more difficult, but God has been faithful, amen? amen. He's brought a team of individuals. God has been opening doors through the care and the prayer and the time and even the donations 
of many of our uh, dear church family who have been able to stand here, go to amazing conference events, be able to provide opportunities for our young people to see Jesus. I am a believer in opportunity. Are you? I believe in it. I believe that all it takes is one opportunity to change the life of a child, to change the life of a young person. And, and think of it this way. A single opportunity, a single campery, a single Pathfinder event, it's not something that's only going to bless this one child. Think about it. You see, the book of Revelation is clear, and the pastor will attest to it. When we all get to heaven, the word says that we're going to be given access to the books. God's record book is going to be open, and you're going to be able to read from it. And you're going to be able to look at how God has been good in your life and how he's used you to bless other people. You see what I pray for each and every one of you? You know what I pray the most? For the most amazing emotion of being able to open the book and look at the book, Pastor. And be approached by individuals that you don't know. And they come to you and they say, my friend, I, I don't know you. But for some reason, I read the book, and somehow our lives are connected. I looked in the record, and years ago, you took the time to pour into my son. And look at his family now, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren loving the Lord. Because you took the time and you invested in an opportunity. That is what it's about. That's why this exists. We're not here just because we want to look nice in a uniform and carry a flag and do the pledge and have parades. It's about Jesus. Church, can you get behind that? This is a minor gift. You see... It is a small gift, but I pray that each and every one of you will accept it. This is for both of you. And, and Sister Keisha, there's a gift there for you as well. Don't let Brother Leon take all of it. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. I think that there's one missing in the pew. Hmm. I'm going to have to look in the... We have one for you as well. It's in the bag. Don't worry about it. There you go, sister. Sister, I think there's also another gift that we wanted to give you this morning. Because, family, I just have to point out very briefly the, the reason as to why this morning flowed the way that it, that it did. Uh, it, it, was, it was because of God using this woman. I'll be honest to say. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I, I, I understand. Here we go. Thank you so much, Andrew and Priscilla. You've been struggling with severe back pain all week. And you've, you've been here rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing, <laughs> putting in the hours. And we just wanted to give you a small gift to show you how much we appreciate you, how much the club appreciates you, and we thank you for everything that you've done for the club. Thank you so much. Can we, can we show our appreciation one more time? <laughs> Folks, uh, you may be seated. As well, you, you may return to your seats. Um, I, I can't forget to thank also my wife. She's the most important team member. Uh, because Elder T, if she says I can't do this, then I can't do this. Okay? She's the one that, 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 that holds it down. Okay? Uh, if she says I can't do it, then I can't do it. So thank you so much, baby. Uh, there is a gift for you as well. In the bag. Later. Yes, later for sure. Family, I just want to ask the AV to just put something on the screen very briefly. We are on a mission, and I'm going to leave you with this. You see, I praise the Lord that in our goal, we have a goal. Ever since we started this two years ago, we have a goal, a financial goal to reach the international camp read, that very event that you saw on the screen. And it required a fundraising of 13 thousand dollars but i praise the lord today church and i stand as a witness that god is good through the commitment of the church family 
through the commitment of the families of the Pathfinders, through the fundraisings that we did through the months, God has been able to provide us now as we stand today with $10,000. Amen. We can only give him the glory. Only 3,000 remain. $3,000. Just 3,000. I honestly believe that just as God has provided this, he will provide the rest and more to ensure that our pathfinders make it to this amazing event. That they be inspired and moved to give their heart to Jesus. And to start a chain reaction. Family, will you partner with us? Now I throw the ball to you. The ball is on your court. You see, the offering that will be taken today, all the loose offering, will go to help the Pathfinder Club and its regular expenses. However, there is a way that you can give, particularly for this international event. How can you help? Go ahead, uh, AV team. You can help in one of two ways. You see... There are two ways in which we can financially bless our Pathfinder Club to, to finalize those $3,000. Amen? You see, we can give through the tithe envelope that is in, your, in the pew in front of you, in the, in the pocket of the pew in front of you. Pastor, how do I fill it out? How do I make it you know, known that it's going for the international campery, Pastor? Well, there is a line under local church budget. If you want to take an envelope and take a look yourself, you can. There is a line under local church budget with the word other, and you are given the option to write which ministry you would like to donate to. If you're interested in blessing the kids of our club to help us reach that goal, we're in the final stretch, you can go ahead and write Gillette Campery or International Campery Gillette. If the words International and Gillette are there, uh, the Treasury team will definitely understand it. You see, you can, give it, uh, you can give to the club through that avenue, through the tithe envelope. But it doesn't stop there. Many of us are online givers. Uh, our tithe and offering uh, uh, go uh, online through Adventist Giving. We have a website that you're able to find this church, North Shore SDA Church, right here in this location. And you're able to digitally, on the digital tithe envelope, find the Pathfinder International Campery Fund shown right there on the screen. That's exactly the layout of what it would look like on a, on a smart device, on a phone. But you can also use the computer. You can access it through the internet. And you can also bless the Pathfinder Club through that avenue as well. One of two ways. One of two ways. You see, I'd like to introduce a third way, and I think that this is a way that all of us definitely need to be making it a priority. Can you guys offer some prayer? Can you pray for us? You see, this is an endeavor that we have never taken before as a club. As you know, International Campery was right here next door for years, three hours away. We are driving cross-country 20 hours. 20 hours. We don't know what this trip will entail. Can you keep us in your prayers? Can you pray for our staff that we'll continue to be full of the Holy Spirit so that we can pour into the children of our club? Can you pray so that our children will be open and available to receive Jesus? These are some ways that we can give. And church family, we thank you for your support. From here on out until August, the, the month of the International Camp we're going to be providing a monthly report right here in front, of the, in front of the church to let you know how far we are in our progress of making it to the very end of that uh, fundraising, of that, of that goal that we're trying to reach. So thank you folks so much, once again, for your time, for your love, for your attention, and for your commitment. On behalf of the North Shore SDA uh, Pathfinder Club, we would like to thank you. And right now, as we transition into our moment of special musical offering, as well as our 
regular offering, which will be collected by our pathfinders. If you feel touched, if you feel inspired, I'll stand over here on this side, and I'll be praying for the church. Pathfinders.
Thank you so much, church, for your kindness, for your generosity, and also for the prayers. We appreciate you. We love you. Uh, we are your club, and we're here to represent you uh, wherever we go. May God bless you always. Uh, let us close our eyes together as we do the benediction. Our dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, holy, holy, holy is your name. And Lord, you revealed the majesty and the glory of your power through the story of Moses. You inspired your people to believe once again in the promise. Lord, they were captives for so long, they forgot the promise that you made to Abraham. They forgot what they were made for. Father, help us not to forget who we are and whose we are. And to understand that just as you had a promise in the Old Testament for your people, dear Lord, you still have a promise that's alive and well and active in our lives today. Help us not to be afraid. We live in a crazy world full of calamity, full of fear, full of chaos. It's very easy to lose faith. It's very easy to doubt in the promise. Dear Lord, inspire us. Holy Spirit, as we leave this place, may you touch our hearts in such an amazing way that we leave drastically different than the way that we've entered, Lord. Father, through the, through the, through, through the, through the service led by children and teenagers, out of the mouth of babes, Father God, may you inspire your community that as the years go by, as things get just a little bit more difficult, as we know they will, as this world heads closer and closer to its end. Inspire us to trust in you and to believe in the promise. We love you. We thank you. Thank you for bringing our club all the way here, and we're excited to see where you're going to take us. To God be the glory. And the church said, amen. Amen, amen and amen.